Hey, it's always nice when it works and I've been away because I'm, it's always a crapshoot. Welcome to the show. It's Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. I love when I'm pressing the buttons and they do what they're supposed to do. There's audio. There's people. The chat room is here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. Glad you could be here. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those days where um, you get the feeling that the right wing is running out of talking points. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, How is that possible? How could they be running out of talking points? Isn't inflation at an all-time high in the world? Uh, yes, that's the problem. In the world. So you can't localize it for very long on the president without somebody, even in your own group, starting to pay attention and go, oh, the rest of the world's going through this too. This isn't a matter of policy. This is a matter of supply shock. This is a matter of the circumstances we currently find ourselves in with energy and, and foodstuffs and the like, and that jacking prices up, not to mention the supply chain, adding to the cost of um, the price of a new car, therefore used car prices went up, and then there was this spike in house, uh, you know, home sales and the stuff that you want when you because a bunch of people got new houses and then they were trying to furnish them while they were during lockdown and then stuff didn't show up and so prices went up because, hey, we're, we've only got four of these. If you want them, they're going to be 20% more, right? So that those kind of prices start stacking on stacking. And then they once they start coming down here, but they're not coming down in the rest of the world in any measurable way, then that it might be policy after all. Now, the Fed has been raising interest rates and and there's a lot of, you know, uh, speculation, clamoring about whether or not uh, they're going to do too much or too little, or it's going to wreck the stock market is the the current one that I've uh, been hearing over the last probably two months the most. I mean, in, any rise in it is, good, is the total abject destruction of the stock market, um, and yet hasn't collapsed. Also, the Glenn Beck uh, crowd and, and those around him, the dollar is taking a shit. The dollar doesn't have any value. The, the Biden administration, not only are they letting the dollar die, but they're helping kill it themselves. And yet, strongest position against the euro ever, every other foreign currency tanking against it, the most stable and, uh, and uh, logical reserve currency on planet Earth at this point. So um, now you would think that after a and I think that might be the reason why they're having a, an issue with their talking points these days. And so that's why you're seeing a lot of recycling. You're seeing, um, if you'll recall, you recently, and this wasn't a fever dream, you recently saw a big bunch of stuff about Hunter Biden's iCloud getting hacked. And curiously enough, the stuff that was on Hunter Biden's iCloud was exactly the same stuff that was on the laptop, allegedly, which doesn't exist. And... The, uh, the hard drive copies that have made been made from it that contain more data than you could fit on a laptop hard drive. I don't know how they did it. As a matter of fact, since John Paul McIsaac, the, the fellow who went into uh, Hunter Biden's three wet laptops, salvaged one, he, if you'll recall, he kept talking about how he only could save a few of the files. He couldn't save everything because it would keep shutting down. We went through this whole interview uh, with him and uh, Captain Marzipan, Eric Bowling on Newsmax. And even though the hard drive on that computer maxed out at 256K, or sorry, 256 gigs, that's my old Mac I'm talking about, um, which is actually a 128, that's not even fair. Um, it maxed out at 256 gigs. Somehow, there's 461 gigabytes of information on this hard drive that Rudy Giuliani's passing around. And even when the maximum size of the laptop hard drive that Hunter Biden had at that time, because this is a few years old, was 256, all right, two, 256. And John Paul McIsaac says, I, only, I couldn't save everything. I only saved the files that weren't totally corrupt, meaning presumably, if math serves, less than the maximum amount. You follow me? Um, somehow, yes, somehow the m less than maximum amount was more than could exist on the actual hard drive. Now, never mind the fact that also, uh, in the, in the two and a half years since the hard drive 
has been in other people's hands. And since the Washington Post, we did the Washington Post article as well, since it got into their hands from a guy who works on Steve Bannon's show, The War Room, he gave it to the Washington Post, the hard drive titled laptop. Ugh. Anyways, during the time that it was, you know, the John Paul McIsaac copied it and handed it to them, more files were added. It's just cartoonishly stupid. So you'll hear a bunch of that stuff. And now I take you, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Joey Pags, the, uh, um, I, I guess the third runner up in a Bosch lookalike contest. And his reward was getting a show on uh, a Minnesota conservative radio. I don't know where he's parked or whatever. And this is Cash Patel, who worked in the Trump administration, who apparently the one thing he learned while he was working with Trump is it's always about sales. Always be closing. The, you want to brand your shit and as goofy as possible because that's the, see his Cash logo for his name. And he's wearing a Truth Social hat. And then he's got a bunch of the, the stickers. They're flying off the shelves. So you better get them while they're hot. Um, this starts with, and I have not watched this video yet. Uh, this starts with Joey Pags asking him, did Trump offer thousands of National Guard troops? Um, you go, Republicans. Uh, but the, the title of this from Joey Pags, and again, this is a video he posted exemplary of the conversation that they had. Not me slicing a piece out of this. I'm sure this sums up his political philosophy, exactly the story that Cash Patel was trying to sell. And I do mean sell. Um, and and not something that I had manipulated. He's got 2,000 views. He's doing better with this than your average Don Jr. Not in the rumbles, though. So uh, apparently the news is this. Former DOD chief of staff, Cash Patel, with unique insight into January 6th National Guard troops, social media, and more. I, I'm excited. You're excited. Now we got to sit through an ad. Oh, StreamYard. That's what uh, Stuttering John uses. Let's go. Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping. Hey, what's going on? I need to work on my banner. I'm always glad to have this young man back. It's Cash Patel, former chief of staff, the, uh, the Department of That's all, folks. All right, I'm done with this clip. No. Defense. Big, big uh, job. Oh, it was God, a big deal. Right. And uh, and Cash knows exactly what really went down before January 6th. And he knows the inner workings of the Republican Party. which seems Of course, he's not going to testify under oath about that. To be splintering Cash, always great to see you. How are you? Joe, thanks so much for having me back on the show. Love to be with you. Hey, I want to make sure that people understand you are... How much coke we're actually both on. Not on social media. This is a... I'm just saying, both of us are heavily caffeinated because if we actually uh, slowed down long enough to actually think about what we're saying and what we're doing, we'd actually be uh, a weeping mess. Wouldn't you agree? I absolutely would agree with that. I think we're both on the same page on that, Joe. I couldn't be happier to be here, Joe. Other than, than truth. That's it. No, you're totally right. The only place I exist is on Truth Social at Cash. Everything else is a fake or a knockoff. And, and yeah. I mean, everybody wants to be like Cash. There are a lot of them out there. So at K-A-S-H, go follow him on Truth Social right now. No, I, I'm on Truth Social. I'm, I mean, if I if I want somebody to just, if I want to re read like Trump's rubber stamps on the account, I'll just read Trump's account because he doesn't even write it himself. He He dictates it, you know. Like the down home populist person he is. In case you were wondering, I'm at Joe Pags. Go follow Cash. You don't have to worry about me. Big, <laughs> big, big engagement on truth. I mean, all of a sudden, huge, huge. It's almost like it's waking up. I mean, almost. It's almost like it's waking up. So it's been asleep this whole time. So you're saying Cash isn't a isn't really a draw. You're saying that he's been on this whole time. That's the only place you could find his account. And yet it's done nothing. That it was interesting. Do you know why that's happening? Yeah. Um, I, I, I would, for the record, I would like to argue that it's not happening. I would like, I mean, there's three sides to every story. And in this particular one, I'm going to argue for the fact that there is no truth social awakening going on. And it's a lot of, uh, fappery. Yeah. Look, truth social. Now I gotta be up front. I'm on the board of directors. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to speak honestly. Joe, and certainly none of this is stuff I would say under oath. President Trump for Truth Social and Devin Nunes. And so we're, you know, it's part of my job to get it going, but they've been at it. To, oh, to get it going. I see. So it's, it's not going. Good to know. All right. For six months. That's why, you know, we've got it on the Apple store. We've got it on all computers and laptops. Jesus Christ. It's like malware at this point. 
How'd you manage that? And hopefully in the next month, it'll help the Android. And that's what you, what I think you see happening is, you know, this moniker of freedom of speech actually means something. Yeah, on uh, Truth Social, that's the first site I was ever directly censored on. That was the first time I posted a picture from January 6th, and it was uh, marked as sensitive content, and you had to click on it to see it. And I, for the record, I do not have a kid's account. And when Elon Musk took the hammer down to Twitter, people actually were forced to listen to what Devin and I exposed during Russiagate. That the hammer down? Oh, you mean where he tried to do a pump and dump and is going to lose at least a billion dollars? Twitter's full of bots and fake Chinese accounts. Yes. Now people are... What about the real Chinese accounts? That are you actually see on Truth Social... That uh, you can also have a lot of bots and fake Chinese accounts. So come on over. You get actual social media with human beings. So you get to interact with, you know, people. And I think that's literally the difference at Truth Social. People on... Yes, even bots aren't interested. We're so boring that even hacker groups are ignoring us. People. And it's not necessarily an echo chamber. You had Gavin Newsom showed up and he started oh, right. posting dumb stuff. I mean, it's open to everybody. <laughs> We're free, you know, people can come in and say whatever stupid shit that's wrong they want. I mean, uh, we're uh, like, obviously, that's probably a Chinese fake account, though. But all we really want is if somebody, like, I've got 51,000 followers, I think, now on Truth. You've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands, which is all. Well, it's easy when he's on the board. He can just make them. He can, he can just literally, there's a little, he can go in there and go, can you? And they'll go, yeah. Whether the followers are there or not. Awesome. If they decide to follow me or follow you, they... I will follow you. I can't see them doing this. You should see what we post. That's not really that complicated. It's a cash. No. And I and I welcomed Gavin Newsom the day he caught on. I've invited AOC on. I want them all on. In my feed, I see people attacking me all the time. And <laughs> That's right. What do you think the big boost at Truth Social is? Apparently, there's a giant wave of people coming over and fucking with us. That's the... That apparently... Is uh, what do you what do you what do you attribute to the rise in stuff that's happening on there? Well, I think it's largely just Democrats coming over and trolling us. There's a huge turnout over there now. Um, all of them have t you know turned off all the stuff so they don't see any of the ads and it, and they're not paying anything. So it's really just parking space. And that's great. That's social discourse. It's not a Donald Trump only platform. It's a free speech platform, like the title says, Truth Social. And that's. That's, 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 that's not what the title says at all. Hi. Hold on one second. Excuse me, my girl just walked in. Man has to have priority. Yeah. I just got started, so... Rest well, and I'll see you in a little bit. Can I get you anything? You want to, have, like, for dinner tomorrow, or tonight, do you guys have any, do you want to discuss, and we'll try to figure that out? Okay. You can do that. Love you. Excuse me. Cat hair on my nose, and it's not related. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Here we go. All right, now I'm back. Where was I? I'm sorry, I'm in a daze, because my girlfriend just came in, and I got to give her a kiss, so that's, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, a show full of awful. I think that's why people love it. And by the end of the summer, looks, I think we're going to be half as big as Twitter. <laughs> no, they aren't. Once we turn on Android. And remember, we haven't even gone international yet. Which right. What do you mean you haven't even gone international yet? Coming later this year. At KASH, go follow him right now on True Social. It's Cash Patel, former um, uh, chief of staff, Department of Defense. And I always go back to that. Totally unqualified for every post. That because this January 6th committee is a kabuki theater. It's made <laughs> for it's a made for TV drama. It's so stupid. Cash, you did speak with them, right? But but it was not on primetime television. Yeah, you didn't. Right. <laughs> Why would you bring that up? Yeah, you know, the, I was the more first guy subpoenaed, me and Scavino, actually. And I found out about the subpoena. Scavino and I. Not from the committee, but from the Washington Post calling me in the middle of the night on my personal cell phone because probably Adam Schiff leaked it to them. Can you imagine? The so, that, well, well, well I, just, I just want to say this. They're, they're doing all this stuff in prime time. They've got the liar lady who was. I still have the, uh, 
Um, <laughs> that's funny. I still have um, the uh, green screen stuff up for this. It's not quite necessary for this part of it because his, sh his shirt seems to be relatively green and it was uh, showing the Epstein pictures. So, sorry, <laughs> one second. On there that was debunked almost immediately from the Secret oh, Service about Trump grabbing. Uh, by the way, no, it wasn't. Well, first guy subpoenaed, me and Scavino, actually. And I found out about the subpoena, not from the committee, but from the Washington Post calling me in the middle of the night on my personal cell phone because probably Adam Schiff leaked it to them. Can you imagine? The point so, is that, well, well, well I, just, I just want to say. This guy was the uh, assistant undersecretary for the DOD, and he thinks that that's how his, somebody got his phone. It, it, dude, they have the person from the Washington Post called you because you gave them a call. You're just too drunk to remember during the Trump administration. Hey, they're, they're doing all this stuff in prime time. They've got the liar lady who was on there that was... The liar lady. Well, you know, that's... I, I, I gotta say, um, you're talking about uh, a Trump hire. Debunked almost immediately. No, it wasn't. Not at all. Wasn't debunked almost immediately. Wasn't debunked, period. From the Secret Service about Trump grabbing the wheel and steering <laughs> the... You know, the whole thing was just so stupid. Uh, well, yes, it was so stupid that he grabbed the wheel and was like, I'm the fucking president, take me to the Capitol now. That's, yeah. And what's come out since then is a bunch of other people are like, yeah, that's that's the story they were telling. They told everybody that. Um, but, but Cash, the most important thing that, that people don't really know yet is this whole idea that Trump offered up 10 to 20,000 National Guard troops. No, he didn't. To protect the Capitol. Cap and by the way, that uh, we now know that the reason why Trump did not put the let's go down to the Capitol and I'll go down there with you part in the speech was because they would have had to get a parade permit and it would have told the both security and the people at the Capitol that after he gives his speech, that asshole is bringing the crowd here. We are going to need more security. He offered up the security in a like verbally internally. It never reached anybody else. I mean, maybe they'll tell a different story here, but that insofar as I know, that it never became a formal request anywhere. And if, the idea that I called her and I said she could have them, but she said, no, like, fuck off. But it, at that point, they're like, I'll give you some more security. And they're like, why would we need that? It's a rally. You can say whatever you want. There's no plans as far as we know to come up here. Little did the people at the Capitol know that this asshole was planning on bringing people to the Capitol after his speech. Had they known, had he gotten a parade permit, had they gotten the necessary paperwork through in the, through the Parks Department and the city of uh, Washington, D.C., you bet your ass there would have been enough uh, security up there to stop the people from getting in. He didn't tell them so he could give his supporters a shot at actually breaking through. Capitol Police said no, and Bowser said no. So basically, Pelosi said no, who's in charge of the Capitol Police. Because at that point... She did not know that they were planning on coming to the Capitol. Trump knew. That's why he kept it out of his speech. It was originally in the speech. He took it out. The reason he took it out is because it would have let them know the people were coming. And Bowser, the mayor of D.C., said no. And they're all still lying that there's no evidence that that happened. So when you sit down with the Jason... Show me the evidence. Hold on one second. This is the uh, um, Trump, let's see, offered 10,000... Uh, National Guard. That should bring it up. Um, I mean, we've seen this one before. I've shown you guys uh, this one right here. Uh, Donald Trump authorized up to 20,000 National Guard troops to protect the Capitol before January 6th, but was rejected by Pelosi and Schumer and Bowser, I guess, technically in this. Um, uh, there's no record of the former president officially authorizing 20,000 National Guard troops for the U.S. Capitol. There's no evidence that the Speaker Pelosi denied the authorization. She doesn't have the authority to do it so in the first place. The Vanity Fair report said Trump made a passing remark to his acting defense secretary, who was in, I guess, earshot of Cash Patel, I suppose, about potentially needing 10,000 National Guard troops, not 20,000, but there's no evidence the comment was treated as a formal authorization. And also, needing 10,000 for what? We, considering we now know that this was a like a fucked up plan that he was, you know, he hid his intention to go to the Capitol with his people and send his people there to to basically make the uh, the like the Capitol security unaware of the attack that was coming, you know, or at least his support of it.
They could have they could have believed like maybe some stragglers come up here and try some shit, but we're ready for that level. They weren't ready for him to say head on down. Also, the um and then when he did, the request for ten thousand, where he uh said Trump made a passing remark to his assistant secretary that they would need ten thousand. It's I mean it sounds like to me if you in the context of all the other shit that he thought the National Guard would help him attack the Capitol. Six committee. Did you tell them that? Did they ask about that? Absolutely. And, and thanks for letting me clarify this. I've been demanding my transcript be released since December, since I testified wow. every single page of it and everybody else's. The, everybody's stuff is going to get released by the by the House committee. I was chief of staff at DOD. I was in the Oval Office with the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. When they didn't draft up an authorization and didn't send it to Nancy Pelosi and it didn't get turned out. Staff and a couple of the people on January 4th. And a couple of people. And in that meeting, the president authorized 10 to 20,000 National Guardsmen. Most of your audience might be saying, who cares? What does that matter? The law, the Supreme Court of the United States has said there can be no National Guard deployment unless two things happen. One, an authorization from the commander in chief, which we got days before. Yes. The second part of the law. Where is it in paper, though? There is no, there is no paperwork. Hold on one second. Let me uh, see if I can see any. Um, there you go. The, let's see. This is December 15th. <clears throat> Saying it out loud and then never actually writing it down and passing it on is not an authorization. And saying he authorized it when there was no paperwork involved is garbage. He said it. We didn't tell anybody else, but um, there you go. This is Sean Hannity. Don't forget President Trump uh, requested increased National Guard support in the days leading up to January 6th. The request was rejected by Pelosi and congressional leaders, including requests, by the way, from the Capitol Police Chief. Um, there you go. Meadows to Hannity. What we do know is the president wanted to make sure that people that came, that there was a safe environment for that kind of assembly. And I've said that publicly before, the 10,000 national groups, uh, uh, guard troops, that he wanted to make sure that everything was safe and secure. Obviously having those national guards available. Actually, the reason they were able to respond when they did was because the president had them on alert. Um, facts. Uh, let's see. Just one month after the attack. Meadows appear on Fox News uh, and made this claim as many as 10,000 National Guard troops were told to be on the ready by the Secretary of Defense. That was a direct order from President Trump. Later that month, Trump appeared to confirm Meadows' account in an interview with Fox News. I definitely gave the number of 10,000 National Guardsmen and said, I think uh, you should have 10,000 National Guard ready. They took that number. From what I understand, they gave it to the people at the Capitol, which is controlled by Pelosi. And I heard they rejected it because it didn't. they didn't think it would look good. Turns out... Uh, but it turns out a Vanity Fair reporter was embedded with the secretary, uh, acting Secretary of Defense Chris Miller and his top aides during the period leading up to the insurrection. That would be the other people Cash Patel is talking about. That real-time access provided a different version of that account offered by Trump and his former chief of staff. During the meeting on Iran with Miller on the evening of January 5th, Trump suddenly shifted direction. The president, Miller recalled, asked how many troops the Pentagon planned to turn out the following day. We're like, we're going to... Uh, we're going to provide any national, uh, we're like, we're going to provide any national guard support that the district requests. Miller responded and Trump goes, you're going to need, uh, 10,000 people. No, I'm not talking bullshit. He said that. And we're like, maybe, but you know, someone's going to have to ask for it. The reporter, Adam, uh, Sorolsky, asked Miller why Trump threw out such a big number. The president sometimes hyper hyperbolic. As you've noticed, there's going to be a million people in the street. I think it was his expectation. It was thousands. Uh, in other words, 10,000 troops was a guesstimate based on Trump's inflated belief in the ability to draw a crowd. The statement did not come as part of a meeting to discuss how to handle the event. Instead, it appears to have been an offhand remark. That's not the same as a request. Trump certainly knew how to order the deployment of National Guard troops in June of 2020, where he actually did, uh, you know, order them to stand on the Lincoln Memorial, if you will remember. In fact, the Defense Department never acted on Trump's remarks, according to our reporting. That would be uh, this dude and his boss. Um, as department officials did not regard the offhand comment to be a direct order as Meadows claim. Miller and other senior Pentagon officials did not relay the 10,000 figure to anyone outside the Defense Department, according to former U.S. official who was familiar with the matter. They did not act on it because based on discussions with federal and local enforcement, uh, law enforcement leadership, 
they didn't think a force of that size would be necessary. Indeed, the official Defense Department planning and execution memo on January 6th also makes no mention of any such discussion. Instead, it notes the possible act activation of 340 National Guard troops to assist the D.C. government with traffic control, a move that came after December 31st request by Mar Muriel Bowser, who at that time didn't know that Trump was going to announce people go to the fucking Capitol. But uh, let's see what Cash rewrites. It's not an or, it's an and must happen. There must be a request from local law enforcement, in this case, D.C. Mayor Bowser or the United States Capitol Police. Yeah, who at that time did not know of any intention by the president to send his followers to the fucking Capitol. This which you said correctly reporting Nancy Pelosi. We put out Bowser's letter where she said no in writing. We put out the United States Capitol Police timeline where their heads of arms, Sergeant at Arms, both said absolutely not. It's not our words, it's theirs. Okay, hold on one second. Um, Muriel Bowser letter troops. Jan 6, something like that. Uh, da, 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 da. This is what they're talking about. <clears throat> the, underestimating the threat, um, DC Mayor Muriel Browser ordered up unarmed guards on Thursday, December 31st. Uh, that's when she asked for the 390. Um, this is, by the way, does anybody know when the first it's going to be wild Jan 6? T uh, tweet was. Anyways, I think it was closer to like the 19th or something. It says the current uh, accepted narrative, the D uh, D.C. mayor uh, rang an alarm about protests at the joint session of Congress. In fact, the opposite is true. What the mayor did ask for was a minimal number of National Guards men and women to help out the Metropolitan Police Department said she warned those troops would be unarmed and not directly involve themselves in any protest. Mario Bowser sent a letter uh, on New Year's Eve to Major General William Walker, commanding general of the District of Columbia National Guard, requesting support on January 5th through 6th. She said guard personnel would support the MPD and District Fire and Emergency Service. No DCNG personnel should be armed during this mission. At no time will DCNG personnel or assets be engaged in domestic surveillance uh, searches or seizures of U.S. persons. By the way, you would normally think that this would be a good thing. This is... For all that clamoring about the George Floyd po protests and, and Dems apparently not taking those things seriously, apparently this is the, the standard by which also maggots are judged. A follow-up letter from Christopher Rodriguez, Director of District uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency, that's the other person he's talking about, said the DCNG's primary mission would be crowd management and assistance with blocking vehicles at traffic posts. He specifically requested six National Guard management teams, uh, 30 TCPs, and six specific metro stations to prevent overcrowded platforms. They, uh, because at this point, none of them knew that Trump was going to say, let's walk down there and I'm going to go with you. That was in the speech at one point. He took it out. Had that been in the speech, they would have called out more people, no question. But he hid it for that very reason. Because he wanted to catch them with their pants down. The reason for the limited request went back to June 1st, 2020, when George Floyd protests reached their peak in the district, along with significant controversy about the role of the military. Former Attorney General Bill Barr uh, characterized May 31st as the most violent day of civil run unrest in the district in 30 years. Oh, boy. Then uh, Donald Trump took his famous walk through Lafayette Square. Blah, blah, blah. We saw that shit. Uh, guard troops were present at Lafayette Square, and a guard UH-72 helicopter uh, hovered over helicopter hovered over protesters. Social media went bananas. The optics of the past 72 hours were putting people inside the halls of the Pentagon on edge as images of U.S. troops on the streets of the nation, uh, nation's capital dominate airwaves across the globe. And again, it wasn't necessary because nobody was planning a march to the Capitol. They didn't want the National Guard. Because why would you need them surrounding the fucking Capitol if none of these assholes were going there? Except stragglers. Certainly if the president wasn't planning on, according to the, the copy of the speech they got, to send them. On January 4th, on 5th, on the 6th. They wanted it when, every, when it was too late. By the way, there were tons of these assholes in the streets on the 4th and the 5th. You've seen the footage of Alex Jones and all these pricks yelling through bullhorns. There was none of the pop-off and, and none of the security necessary around those events 
So without the president sending those people there, there was no need at the Capitol for that kind of uh, that kind of security because they wanted the political optics. And that's the most important thing. Yes, they didn't want maggots to think that the uh, the Capitol was walled off and surrounded by armed troops, because why would you need that if these fuckers were going to listen to Trump and go the fuck home? I stressed this January 6th committee and they could have cared less about that. And they just had snippets of Mark Milley come in for a deposition where he omitted the truth. He talks about how he had conversations with a vice president on January 6th. And I've never said this on TV before. So what? The vice president and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff are by law outside the chain of command. Yes. They can't order anyone to do anything. Well, if the president is derelict in his duty and they and all all Dick Cheney overreach aside they have they can request the vice president can request other people in the chain including the mayor they can't order it up but the extraordinary nature of the request from the vice president especially if he's under in physical danger would absolutely change the face of of the circumstance that was the point and the only thing that kept it from happening was Trump dragging his fucking feet, hoping, I guess, it seems, that his supporters would get to Mike Pence before reinforcements arrived. Literally. Now, wait, was this on the second or the third when this happened, that the offer was made? Uh, I think it was the third or the fourth. I, you know, I can't remember. It was, but it was days before. I mean, and you easily could have had them there on the ready, and none of this stuff would have happened. Yeah, but again, Joe, why? And, and they were working on this speech, by the way. They decided to take out the part where Trump says, I'm going to go, let's walk down there and I'm going to go with you. And he, and they took it out on purpose during those conversations. You get it. You totally get it. And then now the Jan 6 committees, you know, ironically, the people that were mortified that President Trump walked across Lafayette Square with a military uniformed officer carrying a sidearm. These guys now wanted tanks and bell fed machine guns on January wow. 6th. These people have no idea what it takes to defend a nation. They just care about optics. And we put the op- Wait a minute. They did want them? So they didn't want the 10,000 troops. They just wanted tanks and belt-fed machine guns? Where the fuck does that come from? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a... Hang on. Um, is Again, this would be in the realm of, where's the written request on that shit? Optics aside and put the national security mission first. Yeah, but what national security mission? Why would there be a national security mission if the president is having a speech on the ellipse and he doesn't have any plans, according to the text of his speech, to send people to the fucking Capitol? What's the fear? Why would they worry about it? Why should they? And again, this goes to the, the, the main problem with this whole fucking argument is that apparently... It's Nancy Pelosi and Muriel Bowser's fault that they didn't recognize that Trump's followers are a bunch of dangerous lunatics. When you're, I mean, when you're speaking of your own followers, I mean, it's not a strong sales pitch. And it's impossible. Thank you, I always want to say this, but I never get to. It is factually and legally impossible for the president of the United States to support an insurrection when he authorized his Department of Defense to secure and protect the Capitol beforehand. Um, no, he didn't. Again, there's no authorization. He mentioned 10,000 troops because he thought there's just going to be a huge crowd. Like, he's just going to need that many people to surround the fucking place because of people coming and going. But apparently after a while, he was like, ah, take out the metal detectors. They're not here to shoot me. Former chief of staff of the Department of Defense, it's a... Uh, Lying his ass off. Cash Patel. And we always appreciate the time and the, uh, and the knowledge, Cash. I'm yeah, because you're so busy with uh, Truth Social and uh, Cash Money. I'm going to make a comparison that I think might make it easier for people who are watching and listening to, to understand. Okay, good. Uh, th you'll break it down. Now, explain to me why Nancy Pelosi should have uh, known that Trump's followers are anti-democratic, violent psychopaths who all they need is somebody to point and they'll attack the essence of our democracy. When Hurricane Katrina happened, Ray Neg and the mayor and... Knew that Hurricane... Um, by the way, um, when you look at a hurricane, 
you know where it's headed. Mismanagement is one thing, but we'll get to that. The Governor Blanco had to ask George W. Bush to send in the National Guard to help out. They didn't. They dragged their feet, and then Bush got in trouble because he didn't send the National Guard fast enough. What you just said is factually true. Yeah, but he could also specifically offer or pre-authorize. That's what, we, that's what happens a lot now. Bush was just a lazy son of a bitch. He cannot go around the federalism that's already in place where the state or the whoever the governing board is, the, the governing, the overseers of an area are, whoever. are, they have to ask for it. Otherwise, the federal government... I would like to remind you, it is fucking... Uh, it is July 20th of 2022, and Joe Pags has spent six and a half minutes of a clip he has posted talking about whether or not Muriel Bowser and Nancy Pelosi should have called up a bunch of National Guard troops to fight off Trump supporters in, in, in on January 6th. Like, that is the crux of this whole fucking argument. Government could, anytime they want, send National Guard to my house and take it over. I mean, it has to be requested. There has to be an approval. There has to be an offer. All of that happened before January 6th. No, it did not. It was never written up. There was no pre-authorization. That's the point. And again, in, in terms of a hurricane, if you want to use the same analogy that he's talking about, the, the hurricane has to hit before the National Guard are even, you're even sure they need to be there. I mean, you can station people outside of the area just in case if it's really battered, they can move in quicker because they're closer. But they usually use their own or neighboring states' National Guards for these kind of things, which are relatively close. So the, the, the hurricane actually has to fucking occur. So you do a preemptive authorization. Trump did not do that. He half-ass mentioned it. His half-ass staff half-assed it to each other. And then they hid the fact that they were going to the Capitol to to lower the chance that they would increase security at the Capitol. And they all turned it down. So let me ask you this. How do they get away in the fake news with saying there is no evidence that former President Trump ever offered National Guard troops? Yeah. It, I mean, he's got the piece of paper. He's Cash Patel. He had to have walked out. He's probably got it framed on his wall. Scan the camera over, Cash, and show on your wall where you have the frame, co frame copy of the authorization paperwork that Trump sent over. I want to see it. I'm sure it's beautiful. It's on on that uh, like that uh, linen style paper where you can really see the texture, and it's uh, I mean it's Trump, so they probably did it in papyrus like an asshole. They keep saying it. There, there's so much evidence. There's sworn testimony. Forget me, me, chief of staff at DOD, who swore under the penalty of perjury. There's memorandums that I gave them from the Department of Defense that Mark Milley signed that show these actions that the Secretary of Army signed. There's a Secretary uh, again, of Defense himself. No, there isn't. Himself ...who testified under oath three separate times yeah. saying this. And he's also said it publicly. And oh, by the way, here's the... That he mentioned it. He didn't authorize it. ...kicker. Mark Milley is a political animal. And if he could in any way show that the opposite were true, that the lies of the January 6th committee were true, he would have... Hold on. Um... Trump authorization of National Guard on, whoops, on Jan 6 memo. Act of Defense Secretary of the DC National Guard to employ riot control agents and march for Trump. Same capital police knew of a strong potential for violence against Congress. This is what he's talking about. Here you go. This is January 4th. This is the article he's talking about. This is Chris Miller's uh, article. Hold on. Let me stretch this out so you can see it better. We'll get it bigger in this. Huh? Um, subject, employment guidance for the District of Columbia National Guard. This memorandum responds to your January 4th, 2021 me me uh, memorandum regarding the District of Columbia request for District of Columbia National Guard support in response to planned demonstrations from January 5th and 6th. You are authorized to approve the requested support subject to my guidance below and subject to consultation with the attorney general as required by executive order 11485. So here it goes. This is, this is what he's talking about. 
This is, she had already, she made the request of 390 people and all that stuff. With, uh, without my subsequent personal authorization, this is Christopher Miller, the acting uh, DOD secretary, uh, the DCNG is not authorized the following. To be issued weapons, ammunition, bayonets, batons, or ballistic protection equipment such as helmets and body armor. They are not, without my subsequent personal authorization, um, authorize the following. To interact physically with protesters, except when necessary in self-defense or defense of others, consistent with DCNG rules, uh, the use of force. Now, they can't override that. They, they, he couldn't, by saying that, he couldn't, st like, he couldn't say, you have to stand there and if somebody's beating you up, you just got to take it. That's just fucking goofy. So, but it's interesting that the whole purpose of this is you cannot proactively push people back to employ any riot control agents, to share equipment with law enforcement agencies. This is after Mario Bowser asked for 380 people to help with, um, with uh, traffic and making sure that uh, subway platforms weren't overrun. This is during Trump's January 6th thing. They can't do any of this shit. According to Christopher Miller, under Trump, this is the, this is the authorization. This is the memo. They are not allowed to share equipment with law enforcement agencies. They are not allowed to use intelligence, surveillance, or reconnaissance assets to conduct ISR or incident awareness and assessment activities, which is fucking lunacy. It's the nation's capital. Anytime you have a giant group gathering, it would be a good idea to have people keeping an eye on stragglers. Even if the mass of the group means well, the idea that there wouldn't be people in there acting as agent provocateurs or starting trouble or any of that stuff would be reason enough why you would want in any group to have somebody on the out, uh, you know, on the lookout for this. To, they're not allowed to employ helicopters or any other air assets. No, and by the way, this is one of the reasons why Trump bitches about you couldn't see how big his, um, his crowd was because most of the time you can't, they were, they kept the air clear because, you know, they, you couldn't fly around DC you know, there were no media helicopters or any of that shit over the Trump crowd. And usually you would get pictures, if you were going to, of a large crowd from government sources. They were not allowed to conduct searches, seizures, arrests, or similar direct law enforcement activities. So these National Guard troops, these 380 or 390 people, were not allowed to do any of this stuff. They just had to sort of stand there and be like bumper pool bumpers to seek, and they were not allowed to seek support from any non-DCNG National Guard units. So they couldn't reach out to other groups and go, hey, Charlie's sick. Can you, re re you know, replace him from any of these other, or can we need some backup here? Yeah, especially when they knew there was a bomber on the loose. Exactly, uh, Leather Goddess of Phobos. Um, at all times, the DCNG will remain under the operational and administrative command and control of the commanding general of the DCNG who reports to the Secretary of Defense through the Secretary of the Army. You may employ the DCNG Quick Reaction Force only as a last resort and in response to a request from an appropriate civil authority. By the way, uh, according to Cash Patel, the Vice President is, an, is not an appropriate civil authority, even if his life is in fucking danger. What is this? What? Let me, hold on. Let me, I gotta scan this up. This is, oh, oh, back up, silly. Um, this kind of business, there we go. Let me drag this up here. There, they're not allowed to employ helicopters, other assets, conduct searches, seizures, arrests, or similar direct law enforcement activities, seek support from any non-DCNG. And then at the bottom of it, you say, you may employ the DCNG quick reaction force only as a last resort in response to a request from an appropriate civil authority. If the QRF is employed, DCNG personnel will be clearly marked or distinguished from civilian law enforcement personnel, and you will notify me immediately upon your authorization. Now, they were essentially fucked into a cocked hat by that. I will, I will indeed post that on Truth Social later. So that's, just so you know, that's the authorization memo he's talking about. Where basically they said okay to the to the request that Bowser had made on the 31st that they could have these within two days of the event. Like they waited 
five days to say okay to that minimal request that Bowser had made. And then they, but they like tied their hands. Leaked it. Yes. You haven't heard one peep from him to denying that President Trump authorized the National Guard. He didn't authorize the National Guard. That's not an authorization of the National Guard. And certainly not 10,000 fucking troops. He, uh, the Secretary of Defense said okay to the request that the mayor of D.C. made. That's how you know it's true. And I noticed that you're not sitting in jail on charges of perjury. It's Cash Patel. Go to at Cash on Truth. If you haven't signed up for Truth yet, I don't want to hear about your Android uh, story. You've got Google Chrome on your phone. Go to Google yeah. Chrome, put in truthsocial.com, sign up. Get it's a, so it's basically a sales pitch. Get an account, follow Cash, at Cash, follow former President Trump, at real Donald J. Trump. It, dude can't even have his own fucking name. At real Donald J. Trump. They, all right. Anybody try to like make sure you know, when there's a new piece of you know social media that comes up and you want to keep your name so you jump on. I do that sometimes. I'll jump on right away so nobody squats on my name, you know, and and you have to buy it back. It's his fucking site. They can't verify or make sure he's the only Donald J. Trump on there. Follow me at Joe Pags. It's a great site. Tons of engagement compared to Twitter. It's tons. Uh, Cash no, it's not. Cash's book is called The Plot Against the King. Get this if you have The Plot Against the King. Is it a pop-up book? I haven't gotten it yet. The Plot Against the King. And his website is fightwithcash.com and Cash is K-A-S-H. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the, the infighting with the Republican Party a little Oh, good. All right. And fuck, I don't have any popcorn. A little bit. I've only interviewed Mike Pence once, and it was in the campaign back in 16. I haven't talked to him since. Seems like a nice guy. Um, yeah, he's, apparently he's got a chip on his shoulder about somebody trying to put a noose around his neck on January 6th. You know, that day when you participated in his near hanging. But now he's starting to come out, and, and he's the establishment guy. He's going to calm things down, and, and he's going to go to Arizona and go back a candidate against Kerry Lake, who's the Donald Trump-supported candidate. Cash, why do you think Mike Pence would do this? What's the story here? Because um, he, I think it's probably because he wants the Republican Party to survive, and he's not a petty fuck that holds grudges based on his own dented ego. I'm <laughs> just spitballing. Look, you know, they, you know, the, 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 the old guard Republican Party thinks that they can restore that old guard Republican Party, what they fail to realize is that these guys are going to be shiving the shit out of each other all the way up to Election Day in 2024. Is Donald Trump transformed that Republican Party? Donald Trump will... Yes, he certainly did. In the same way that your colon transforms remnant food into excrement. will be in Arizona on Friday for a rally where we have, he has endorsed and I've endorsed Carrie Lake, Abe Hamada, and Blake Masters, the America first leaders at Arizona needs. Right. The fact that Mike Pence is going out there to support a self-funded billionaire fake uh, Republican. Um, it, uh, I mean, obviously he's got a problem with a, uh, a billionaire fake Republican when his boss is a fake billionaire Republican. It's all about syntax. Tells you everything you need to know about the status of the country and what he's doing. He's trying to get name recognition. Maybe he's running for president. It doesn't matter who runs. If Donald Trump runs, it does not matter. And it, I don't think... It, yes, if Donald Trump runs, if um, he's going to collapse the party. It matters in Arizona who Mike Pence endorses. Yeah, but Cash, the left doesn't do this. Democrats always circle the wagons. Why no, we don't. <laughs> Again, can I remind everyone... Can I get about my complaint? Trump wouldn't even fucking be a part of this conversation if Democrats always circled the wagon. Everybody's got their crazy base. The interesting thing, though, is the crazy part of the Democratic base is shrinking in terms of behavior, no matter how loud and annoying it is. And the, the, uh, the crazy part of the Republican base is growing. It's 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 like a metastasizing tumor that's pushing everything out. Why is it always our side? I'm not a Republican. I'm a conservative. I'm a, uh huh. I'm an America First guy. I'm not a party guy. Why would anybody come out? Like people are attacking Mara Flores, who is the, uh, mm -hmm. the the young woman who was born in Mexico, who just is a Republican conservative, married to a border patrol agent, just won a special election. They're saying mm -hmm. that she voted for amnesty, and she didn't. 
sorry. I'm just enjoying the just just enjoy the infighting. Yeah, she voted for amnesty because she was born in Mexico, and that's what they do because it's all replacement theory stuff or something. I don't know. I'm enjoying this. This is good. Go ahead. She didn't vote for amnesty. That's just a lie. But we've got Republicans coming out and saying she's a problem. Uh, Trump is a problem. Carrie Lake's a problem. Jeez, you have, you have Republicans coming out that a woman born in Mexico who's holding office is a problem? I, I that would have, that blows my mind. I can't imagine. I could never, I can't picture a Republican having an issue with a Mexican-born woman being in political office. I don't know why. That what 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 could be the trigger point except everything about her? Why is it our side that does this? You know, that's if if we knew the resolution of that answer, we would be winning everything yeah, all day long. True. And I and I honestly think it's that. Wait a minute, you're not. I thought you were going to be tired of winning, dude. You work directly for Trump. You should be exhausted from from winning. We cannot put our our, our slight differences aside uh, for the betterment of the of the concern. Slight differences, slight, motherfucker. You have a, what would effectively be establishment Republicans with you know deep seated conservative values, the small government bullshit that you can drown in a bathtub, ending Social Security. That like they're all in on that, and then you got Carrie Lake who literally is still yammering about the 2020 election and doesn't give a rat fuck about any of these things. She basically wants a Great Wall of China across the southern border and then fuck it. Conservative movement. She's a lunatic. Maybe the rest of them are just lunatic. Maybe the assumption is, is that they, it's, it's lunatic projection. The, you know, I'm with you on this whole political party nonsense. It's the values that bind us together. Yes, yes. and those would be, what? And we just can't for, for, because I think there's certain egos out there and I won't name them. Yeah, please don't. Right. I mean, I mean, obviously there's an ego list. What would you say on the Republican side of things? What would you say the biggest ego is? Just, I mean, you don't have to go in alphabetical order. That think that these parties and institutions exist to serve their needs. They don't. They exist to serve the American people. And some of these folks have never had a real. Trump is not watching this cash. He's not seeing this. And you're not going to convince him if you say so. Job. I've never done anything, but they want their caravans. They want their free security. They want their free travel and they want their name on TV. Yes, Trump. We know that's your, yeah, we, we understand that's what your boss is like. What? So they'll do anything to keep it. And it's, it's just a failure of service to the American people. And uh, we need to do better. Fightwithcash.com. It's K-A-S-H at cash over on Truth Social. Let's talk about Musk and Trump a little bit. <laughs> um, I tweeted to, to Musk the other day. Why'd you tweet to him? Isn't he on Truth Social? He, uh, he, Why wouldn't he be on Truth Social? He said something about uh, you got to put him out to pasture. His time is done. He's got to move on. And, and I responded to him and I said, tell me what on policy you've got a problem with. I talked about energy independence. Let me guess, he didn't respond. Lower regulations, lower taxation, lower government, love America, close the border, energy independence. And, and I said, what on policy do you disagree with him? And he responded to me. He said, ah, I just don't know that we want the drama of the bull in the china shop all the time. And then he said he thinks that the 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 age that you should stop. I, he actually responded to Joey Pags on Twitter. Hold on one second. Um... Uh, is he, uh, did he go at Joey Pags? Oh, yeah, Joe Pags. Okay, there we go. Let's see. Oh God, this, this man's Twitter feed is frightening. More criminal activity at the Capitol. Somebody took, it, it, they took her sign. I already talked to the police officers because you wanna know what happened? Another sign got taken off the wall. Do you oh my God. Know which sign this was? This is the sign, yep, not here. Oh, but it, they ripped it off so hard they tore the duct tape. Why'd you fucking use a duct tape on the walls of the Capitol? Duct tape? 
You're gonna lose your security deposit, Marge. Sign it was. It was Tim Hysom's arrest warrant because the Capitol Police caught him on video right here vandalizing this sign. Why? Because they can't take the fact that there's Je uh, male and female aren't aren't genders. They're sexes. Stupid. Man and woman are technically genders. Male and female is 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 sex differences. Only Fucking duct tape. That's why we can't have nice things. Genders, male and female. There's only two, but they've been attacking the sign. Hi, stupid. And those aren't genders. Male and female aren't genders. They're sex characteristics. They are sexual definitions. They're sex definitions. They're not. Ugh, fuck me. Chief of staff for Jake Austin boss, which I'm sure Jake doesn't get awards like this for actually having a great voting record. <laughs> <laughs> They attack this because they hate my faith, my religion. It's a hate crime. And they think it's a hate crime. The fact that I'm a he posted a picture of, of an arrest warrant copy of him. So there's another sign taken off the wall, stolen. Department of Justice is not going to prosecute them. By the way, same staff that let in the Steven. It took, his, it, it, it took my stapler. My stapler. Um, if you don't bring it back my step, it's the only staple that I like. If you don't bring it back, I'm going to burn the, uh, the whole place down. Um, this is Joy Packs. I don't see, let's see. I God knows when this was. We have to go through this. I'm, I'm not going to comb through this asshole's entire feed. Especially if it means reading a bunch of Bobert when uh, the man purchased him finally by Bill Gates and China. Uh, they're not buying uh, China's big thing isn't farmland; they're buying pork processors. But like, like she gives a shit. Dems in denial. DHS chief says bo southern border is secure. Look at those people walking along it. Do we actually have a fucking moat? That's amazing. Um, uh, Darren's ready for a response to handle migrant influx. Oh, this is his writing. Okay, lives in TikTok, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to take it as bullshit. Oh, this is, I mean, this is recent. So he, he tweets a lot. He's on there. I don't know that, let's see, hold on. Maybe if I go back to. Joe, uh, Joe, whoops, Pegs, Elon Musk. Maybe that's it. Mm -hmm. Talking of this. A lot of it's ads about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elon. Elon Musk, Biden is a damp sock puppet in human form. Uh, uh, let's see. Pegs, this is his stuff. Brendan Carr. Da -da -da. Totally great show, Joe. Love it. Real question. Maybe Elon Musk has the answer. But, okay, so hold on. Replying to Joe Talk Show. And real question. How does the left hit uh trending every night? Of course, it's not organic. What is it? Uh-oh. Somebody's jealous. Yes, it is. It's quite organic. And he does realize that that was, it's because she's on on Mondays, dumb fuck. All right, I don't see a crisscross. I'm calling bullshit. Let's just, I'll call bullshit on it. Operating for president is six. Somebody finds it, I would love to see it, that, that Elon Musk responded to Joe Pags. But I think he was trolling with the number 69. What is the issue? Elon Musk says he's a right guy now. He says that he was kicked out of the Democrat Party, basically. Donald Trump is probably the reason. America First is probably the reason why he sees it that way. Why do we want billionaire versus billionaire? Asshole. Uh, first of all, uh, Trump's not a real billionaire. Secondly, Elon Musk's entire company wouldn't exist if the Obama administration hadn't put electric cars as part of their priority in the bailout package in 2009. Billionaire when they appear to be on the same side of the aisle. That's kind of odd, isn't it? They're not. Yeah, it's kind of, maybe it's a little odd, but I think when you took a look at these two figures, and I don't know Elon Musk really, I don't know him at all. Yeah. Um, I, He's not on Truth Social? I just know I helped fund his programs at DOD to the tune of 20 or 30 billion. Wow. Uh, if he wants to send me a thank you letter, he can. <laughs> but I, 
Uh, yeah, dude, you were there for a week and a half, dummy. <laughs> I saw your, your exchange with him, and it's, it's amazing, and it's awesome that he responded. All right, well, then I guess he did. Responded to you because it's what you said. He agrees with the policies and the direction of the country that President Trump took it, but he disagrees with the person. That's ridiculous. It's absurd. It if we based it on people who we liked, we wouldn't know almost no politicians would get elected and do the job successfully. Well, he's saying I think what he's saying is that there are plenty of other Republicans who would do or at least talk about doing the exact same thing. They're just not blathering egomaniacal pricks. And this billionaire battle, you know what? I think it's great. I think every time that Elon Musk says anything on Twitter, the, even the fake wing media has to cover it. Yeah. When Donald Trump's fake wing media, is that right wing fake news? Speaks on true social. That's why it's growing so exponentially. Because, because uh, um, if you're at zero, any growth percentage wise is amazing. They don't want to cover Donald Trump. You don't have to tell me. I'm at three. Uh, by the way, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Um, what's my, let's see, what's my current... Do we have this? Hold on. I'm going to go to my channel. Let's see what this is. 37.7. I'm, we're getting there. We're 300 away from 38,000. 40K right around the, uh, right Trump around the corner. Social. But they have to cover Elon Musk kicking Twitter's ass every day. Yes. And now these geniuses fell into the trap. <laughs> Musk is going to sue them, counter sue them right. for years. And going to expose the bots and everyone's going to see it even more and more and more. So I think Twitter's on its way down and you know what? Yeah, you guys will be right there waiting with open arms. I might be in the minority, but I'm all for this billionaire battle. Well, it's very interesting to watch in the sidelines, that's for sure. Although I wasn't really in the sidelines because I was in the middle of it there. I know President Trump. You know President Trump. He's a really nice guy. He's a cool guy to hang out with. He's a totally cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've seen you guys seen all the videos you guys like where you're just take, taking pictures together all your so your uh, selfies with him and no i haven't no one has good guy to talk to yeah. i've interviewed him 11 times and we actually did an in-person interview uh, in the green room at the white house he's a really nice guy and i'll give one short example he's a billionaire that you would assume would talk down to you he doesn't and uh, in fact my daughter he, he talks sideways to you sam who i think you've talked to in setting up interviews was yeah. there with me and he sat down across from me. I said, oh, this is my daughter, Sam. Sprung back up, went over, shook her hand, gave her a hug. And I'm like, this is the president of the United States who has a gold toilet in our Trump Tower. He just jumped up as if my daughter was the most important person in the room. How old is she? Cash, people don't know that about him. Do they need to know more of that about him? Or or you like the, the bull? You know, I, I think you only get that when you have a, when you're fortunate enough to have the relationship you do and I do. Yeah. And it's and he doesn't run on that. He runs on. Hold on one second. Texas radio host's daughter found 1,200 miles away near Mexican border. This is her. Uh, and this is in 2016. So she's now, I guess during uh, Trump's years, she was, you know, 17, 18 years old. Texas radio host's daughter, 16, is found 1,200 miles away near Mexican border three days after she was reported missing with man 29 who was arrested for unlawful restraint. Good Lord. Poor girl. It was found in San Diego on Saturday. She was with Christopher Fretwell, a co-worker who was arrested for taking a child out of the state without parents' permission. The Spring Branch uh, Texas teen was reported missing on Wednesday. Her father, Joe Pags Pagliarulo, is a nationally syndicated radio host. He went on the air Friday and issued a public appeal to find his daughter. Tina safe. Families arranged to pick a 16-year-old girl. Went missing three days and found in relief. That uh, Joe Pags. This is the dude. Gabby was found with Christopher Lee Fretwell, who was arrested for unlawful restraint because he took a child out of state without her parents' permission. That's her. Um, on Friday, Joe, who was broadcasting on WAI uh, on, in San Antonio, KPRC in Houston, shared his words on the air asking for people to keep their eyes peeled. He also wrote a Facebook post, we need her home. Gabby, we love you and miss you so much. Baby, come home now. 
Police suspected Gabbity was heading to California, and the teen was found safe in San Diego after three days. Fretwell was arrested for unlawful restraint because he took a child out of state without permission. Gabby and Fretwell knew each other through work, although it remains unclear why they were in California. That's her, by the way. So Trump met her when she was 18 years old and jumped up to give her a hug. Uh, Joe return on the air. It's, it's the joy of a father. Uh, I mean, I, that's terrifying and I don't wish that on anybody. Um, I'm no fan of this dude, but that's fucking frightening, especially when your daughter is 16 years old. Fuck that dude. Um, this is her at that time. I can't imagine why Trump would jump up and run over and give her a hug. Or why he would think that buddy to buddy, um, you're uh, allowed to hug each other's daughters. Hey, I know you, right? You. That I mean, fucking hell, that's terrifying. Anyways, that's uh, that's that's who she was policies and decisions that make America safer. And I had a similar experience when I interviewed him down at Mar-a-Lago. My parents have you interviewed him happened to be there. Yeah. He, be, without telling me, went over to my parents, sat down, had a conversation with them and offered them tea. I mean, this is how dare he? I mean, that's amazing. Nobody would do that. I mean, there's com a common courtesy in his own place. And he didn't even know it was Cash's parents. He, had a, he how could he have known? These are just random people walking around Mar-a-Lago in an area where no one else can go. He's the president of the United States. And, you know, people don't hear those stories, but the people that work with him know what he stands for. Yeah. And if we were treated like the way they've, they've sort of uh, characterized President Trump in the media and the fake news media, none of us would work for him. But you know that's fake. Yes, you would. Especially if you were uh, like co-conspirators in a crime. I know it's fake. I know the man he is. You do. And I think most viewers do, too. I even think the CNN and the New York Times of the world know it, too. They just they just refuse to report it. Well, just they did that. Just go up. before he came down the escalator. They all not only knew it, they all wanted to be in his circle. No, they did not. He was a running gag. They're yeah. all so full of crap, right? I mean, they all changed everything because he wasn't saying the things on policy that they wanted to hear. So we go back to, I want to finish with this. No, I. there's other people who've said similar things on policy it was how he said it and the racist nature by which he said a lot of those things and his kind of wanton disregard for half of the fucking country america first is the policy that, that he's uh he's out there yes america is the first bargaining chip whenever he's trying to make a deal we get it We're campaigning on although he's not officially running i hope he does he's backing candidates that love america want to close mm -hmm. the border want to be energy independent they want us to, to they love america as a gated community with a moat around it. To, to be proud of our country again. You know, um, an America with no cash Patels. An America with no Melania Trumps. An, Amer right. um, when he's um, an America with no Mexican-born women running for Republican office. That kind of America. Out there doing all of that, I don't understand why everybody, left and right, if you're center left a little bit, center right a little bit, far right, who cares what his personality is, which... Well, because for some reason... He wanted to gargle Kim Jong-un's balls and carry water for Putin, like carry the piss bucket for this dude everywhere. And yet he wants to shit on everybody else we have a genuine security relationship with. It's sketchy. Again, you and I like. I mean, Obama's got an unbelievable fake personality. He looks like a guy you'd want to have a beer with. But his policies sucked. So can, <laughs> can, can we look past this? And I'm not... Obama looks like a guy you'd want to have a beer with, but his policy sucked. I, I again, uh, well, all right. It's Trump is not going to change, and I don't want him to really change. I want people who are perceiving him to change. Can they yeah, it's not about him changing as a candidate, as a as a president, as a as a human being. It's our fault, guys. It's my fault. I'm I I'm just I'm stubborn. And I, I failed Donald Trump, okay? <laughs> and that happened because I still hear from Republicans, and so do you, Cash, who say, yeah, but he's not really presidential enough. Yeah, but does he have to tweet like that? We, 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 what do you think has to happen to get them in the tent? Uh, they already left. They're not coming in, back in the tent, fucko. They've gone.
It's not, it, it, it's, he's not an unknown entity. This isn't 2016. I know this whole thing is revisionist bullshit. But none of them are like, oh yeah, I mean, uh, looking at how he operated, I, I realized that his brash nature actually was just cover for, for a very keen mind that was great at creating, uh, you know, the kind of policies of the Republican Party. No, he did what he was supposed to do. He's going to get three lunatics on the Supreme Court. That's it. He's not going to get another one. They're not, there's not going to be, if he got back in, there's no, an, there's not another Amy Coney Barrett that's happening. Nobody in the Democratic Party is going to, like, after the Roe v. Wade stuff, they're just going to stomp the brakes on it. So he's useless now. I think we're almost there. I mean, you'll never get everybody almost there, but I think, yeah, any day now, the Republican Party is going to come around to how much they truly love Donald Trump. Do you, Listen to this conversation. He's not talking about Democrats. He's not talking about center-right Democrats or center-left Democrats. He's talking about the Republican Party. I think I've been saying this for a long time, and so have you. The yes, uh, and still it hasn't caught on. Left, the radical left has politicized the national security apparatus so much that you've seen the disastrous consequences that our border against Iran, Russia, yes. China. We can go on countering terrorism, Afghanistan, everything. Dude. Uh, you actually worked at the DOD. There's one thing about, like, generalized policies of somehow the radical left. You actually were fucking there. Own your shit. That combined with what you were just talking about, that- Oh, was he just talking about Bush not reading the PDB or- or Trump not reading the PDB unless it had uh, cool stories about him. That people want decisions in leadership that don't jack up gas prices, that don't jeopardize their child's safety and educational rights, and that safeguard America. And they are so they want lockdowns without lockdowns. They want to fight COVID without fighting COVID. They want 2020 to have been done differently by the same people. Dude, Trump is never going to be anybody but Trump. Willing to trade off personality, whatever they call flaws and whatnot, or fake. Yeah, <laughs> flaws. I mean, grabbing a woman by the pussy just because you think you have the right to. It's, you know, it's a it's a quirk. I wouldn't call it a flaw. It's a, it's just, you know, it's a little thing. It's got, it's a little colloquialism he does. It's just something he picked up in the neighborhood. Fake news flaws yeah. to get the change done. So I think those two are converging this this election cycle. No, they aren't. Because look, it's been what, 18 months of Joe Biden? And we're in the worst place we've ever been in like- No, we're not. Like 55 years? No, we're not. Yes. In American history, people are quietly sitting at their kitchen tables going- Going, all right, uh, inflation is up 9.1% year over year from uh, right when Delta was occurring. So that's offset. It's going up because it's related to where prices and stuff went down because no one was, you know, everybody went back to not going anywhere. So it creates an artificial bump July to August on that. And at the same time, wages are up 5.2% and the deficit's been cut in half and unemployment's been cut in half. Um, it's a kitchen table thing. I might be a moderate, but uh, we were way better off under President Trump. You might be a moderate. <laughs> and my kids are getting older. And that's what we need again. Get his book, The Plot Against the King. It's a it's a great book. I've got it. Um, you do realize that King is a pejorative. Um, we live in a democracy. Fuck kings and queens. That's nonsense. And also, Xi Jinping is not a president. He's a chairman. My office. Also, go and check him out. Fight with Cash. At best premier. Com. Cash is with a K. At Cash on Truth. Literally 10 seconds, Cash. Could you ever have imagined President Trump jumping on Air Force One, going over and fist bumping and kissing the ass of the Saudi prince? I mean Let's see if I can. Oops, hold on. Back over here, you silly man. Let's just uh, let me put it over here like, whoops, put it over here like this. Um, I can't, the screens on here are so, so very strange. See that? What is happening? There we go. Uh, where's the GIF? There it is.
Watch this. Doink. Doink. He does his little doink. This is, uh, yeah. Trump appears to curtsy to Saudi King. Didn't even bow to him. He curtsied to the dude. Yeah, I uh, can't imagine. Can you imagine Trump going over there and 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 kissing the ass of people like that? I, I mean, could you imagine? No, what he did was get Middy's peace negotiated. <laughs> he got Middy's peace negotiated. Did he now? Did is that what he did? He he got Middy's peace negotiated. Donald Trump appears to curtsy. To Saudi King. This is done. Yep. For the first. No, he didn't. Bahrain and and the UAE were not at war with fucking Israel. Time in world history. That's the difference. Um, Biden just got the Saudis to allow Israeli flights to fly over and land in directly into Saudi Arabia. All the Abraham Accord shit that they were talking about. Trump got Bahrain and the UAE, and Trump got Saudi Arabia. Cash Patel, former DOD chief of staff, thanks a lot for your friendship. Biden fist bumped because uh, the prince has a poison ring given to him by Putin. Um, yeah, I, I think that might be uh, many of the reasons. What's the other option? This, you got to do some kind of greeting. Fist bump is fine, but we're back to terrorist fist bumps. I mean, that, remember remember the, the whole like Obama terrorist fist bump gate? Uh, whoops. I mean, that was a whole... I mean, that was right up there with the fucking tan suit. Hold on one second. Uh, let's see. If we... Yeah, this. remember this business? Yeah, the terrorist fist bump. Adorable. If I love Truth Social, everybody should go there. No, it's garbage. Anyways, um, so uh, that, that was our first Joe Pags bit in a, in a while. But I would like to say for the record that as far as anybody, uh, you know, I, I would think, you would think, like I said, with that, with the alleged Hunter Biden iCloud thing or something else, they'd have something else to talk about. They're literally the the primary fighting point that people in Trump's cabinet who are speaking freely on his behalf, the biggest defense, and Trump even is using this himself, is that people should have realized my followers are violent assholes. And because they didn't, the, yeah, I agree. Uh, Pags is pretty boring. Um, I mean, it's, Watching somebody kiss ass like that, unless that's your fetish, is not going to do it. 